Denver police shot and killed a man today who they said was assaulting a woman. Police believe that they saved this woman's life by shooting the suspect. Nine News reporter Katie Eastman is at the Globeville townhomes in Denver where this happened. Yeah, Jenny and Alex, just before noon, someone called 911 and told Denver police that someone was being assaulted in these townhomes. Police say they got here in less than 10 minutes, and when they arrived, they had to force their way in. Inside, they encountered a man and his female partner. Police say the man had stabbed her and wasn't allowing her to move. When officers got here, they say he started stabbing her again, and that's when one officer fired one shot that killed the man. Division Chief of Patrol Ron Thomas believes that officer saved the woman's life. Well, certainly there's a decision that needs to be made, and I think we trust our officers to make those those kinds of decisions. Um, I think the officer felt that not only were that was there danger to the officers, but certainly a significant uh, danger to the, the individual that was being uh, assaulted at the time. Police also told us there was a young child in the home at the time, and they are safe now. The woman was transported to Denver Health. Police described her condition as serious. Jenny and Alex. Yeah, you never want to hear that. Glad that child is safe. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Katie. I want to give you a live look now out at Glenwood Canyon. I-70 is back open after a flash flood warning shut it down for about an hour this afternoon. Glenwood Canyon isn't the only area with a flash flood warning right now. Here's a look through our Horsetooth Mountain camera. There are flood warnings for the Cameron Peak and the East Troublesome fire burn scars this afternoon as well. Meteorologist Danielle Grant tracking these storms as they move across our state today. Hey, Danielle. Hello. Yes, it should be a pretty active afternoon already up in the high country and into the foothills. We just have a couple of sprinkles here across downtown Denver for now, but I am looking at the better shot at seeing some of those storms rumbling through within the next about three to four hours. As we look outside, you can see just the dark, daunting skies in the distance. This is atop our camera at Lookout Mountain looking up to the north. There's a storm just to the north of the Boulder area, but all of this activity coming our way from the southwest. This is the monsoon winds that are ushering in that Gulf moisture. You can see a lot of lightning strikes out there too, especially in and around our burn scars. We have that flash flood warning in place until 7 p.m. That's around uh, parts of the Cowwood burn scar and also uh, the East Troublesome burn scar. So keep that in mind if you are in that area. We'll zoom in kind of closer to the city. Just a couple of little lightning strikes around Centennial, a little light rain right there around I-76 Commerce City up to Brighton. A few showers just beginning around Boulder, but I am anticipating some stronger storms later this evening. As we look off to the southwest around the San Juans, lots of lightning out there through Lake City, parts of Telluride, up to Crested Butte and Gunnison too. You mentioned those flood alerts, the flood watch in place through 10 o'clock tonight. That's much of the western slope and then also the flash flood watch just because we are looking at these slow moving thunderstorms around our burn scars that could easily be dropping a half inch to an inch of water within an hour's time. Certainly just too much of a good thing. Here we are about five o'clock, still looking pretty good around the metro areas for counting on a few rain showers around here. Seven o'clock, most of the action is pretty much done. Maybe a quick shower about nine, 10 o'clock. Otherwise, we're going to be watching these storms move out. Luckily, the cloud deck helping to cool us off. We're now in the 80s in Arvada through Littleton and downtown, but still hot off to the northeast. Humidity values in that 20 to 30 percentile, so still pretty dry here at the surface. Temperatures will be slightly cooler tomorrow. Wait till you see the seven day because I have another big warm up on the way next week. I'll show you in about 10 minutes. Let's stick with weather because there's a big focus on heavy rainfall today, especially in those burn scars. There's a new flash flood warning issued just for the Cameron Peak fire that's up in Fort Collins. Then we've got Corey Reppenhagen in Boulder tonight. Burn scar. How's it looking near you right now? Yeah, you know, we're keeping an eye on that Cowwood burn scar where there is a pretty strong storm developing nearby. You can see the dark skies behind me. Now that one up in the Cameron Peak burn scar just popped up in the last five minutes. So we're waiting to see if it hits a critical area of that burn scar. Depending on where it is in that burn scar, it makes a huge difference in how much flooding you're gonna get. And so far we've had a very active monsoon with lots of warnings this summer, but all those heavy storms have just missed those critical areas of those burn scars. So I think we've been fortunate with that where the heavy rain we have had has been out of the most severely burned areas. Greg Hansen with the National Weather Service says all the 2020 burn scars have been rated for burn severity. The parts of the fire that burn the hottest are the areas most susceptible to major flooding. The worst flooding we've seen so far this summer has been minor. 
like this road in Grand Lake washed out by debris from the East Troublesome Burn Scar. But the risk of catastrophic flooding like we saw in Poudre Canyon last summer is still just as high this year if the rain falls in just the right spot. In fact, Hansen says parts of Cameron Peak and East Troublesome burn so severe that major flood risk could last five years or longer. The greatest risk comes from how fast the rain falls. So as little as a third of an inch of rain can cause major flooding in a burn scar if it falls in 15 minutes or less. We're not talking very much rainfall, uh, but it's the, the short burst of rain in a short amount of time hits the ground hard. You know, we still don't have a forest canopy. We still don't have much or any vegetation on the ground. There's no roots to hold that together. So right now here at the bottom of the, the Cowwood burn scar in Boulder, we've got more wind than rain, but those storms are up in the foothills. And we, you know, in the atmosphere, we have a measurement that's called precipitable water. And that's one way to measure the water vapor. It's at near record levels today. So we could see a rainfall rate of one inch of rain in a half hour. That could cause flooding anywhere uh, outside of the burn scars even, but in the burn scars, it could be devastating. So, so far, we haven't had them hit those critical areas. We'll have to keep an eye on that Cameron Peak warning right now to see if it is hitting one of those critical areas where the burn severity is much higher, guys. You can hear that wind. I know, around it's him. coming. You wanna hope that those near misses keep happening, but yep. we'll, we'll definitely see. We'll be on top of it as well. Corey, thank you. So West Metro Fire made it official today. The Snow Creek Fire burning in Morrison is now 100% contained. It started Tuesday afternoon and burned about an acre on Mount Lindo, just above Highway 285. The fire briefly forced evacuations just below the mountain, but no homes or buildings were damaged in this one. West Metro crews finished building the containment line around lunchtime today. They say it most likely started by lightning. Not a great day to be flying in or out of DIA today. At last check, 80 flights canceled, almost 250 delayed. FlightAware's misery map shows Denver at the third worst major airport in the country for travel right now. That's a bummer. Uh, the prices to park in some spots at the airport, by the way, those are going up starting today. We're talking the airport garages, economy, short term, and the 61st and Pena lots, all going up by either a dollar or two dollars a day. Mount Elbert and Pikes Peak shuttle lots will not change. They are staying at $8 a day. DIA says this increase for some of these lots, it's necessary for airport operations. And if you're driving this weekend, steer clear of I-70 through the Central 70 project in Denver. The eastbound lanes are closing tonight between Washington Street and I-270. I uh, that closure starts at 10. It goes until 5 in the morning on Monday. And the point here is they, oh, by the way, they also have the on and the off ramps between those points also closed. Crews are working to get that road ready for the first two traffic shifts related to the Central 70 project. You can read more about those plans on 9news.com. In Brighton, police have arrested a 17-year-old boy connected to the murder of a teenager earlier this week. The shooting happened around 9.30 Tuesday night at Ken Mitchell Park. Police say witnesses heard people arguing before someone shot 17-year-old Josiah Gonzalez. Police arrested the suspect at his home in Commerce City yesterday. They haven't said if there was a connection between the two boys. In Westminster, police are trying to figure out who tried to burn down a playground. This is the damage left behind at Irving Streets Park. City says it's no longer usable at this point. Fire happened around 2.30 yesterday morning, and police hope that anybody with some information to please call Crime Stoppers. That number is 720-913-7867. How awful. All right, ahead on 9 News at 4, the U.S. House is voting to expand abortion rights again. But those bills, still a long way from becoming law. Our 9 Health expert joins us to talk about birth control and reproductive care and how access to it could soon change. And Danielle's tracking those thunderstorms and flash flood warnings across our state this afternoon. Her full forecast is coming up in 10 minutes.